You know, I find it really interesting that we keep hearing so much about the uh, far left in this country and how dangerous they are. Meanwhile, we have a far right in this country who is literally plotting terror attacks on vote counting facilities because they believe Donald Trump when he says that this election was fraudulent. But please, mainstream media and politicians, let's keep talking about how dangerous the far left is. I mean, it's absurd to me. And to even compare the far left and the far right, this is a false equivalence. The far left wants to give everyone health care and education and stop climate change, whereas the far right wants a white ethno state and wants an authoritarian regime with Donald Trump as the dictator. So why is it that we keep fearmongering about the far left when we have a far right in this country that is completely out of control? We have a Republican Party that is sh shifting further and further to the right to where some sitting members of the Republican Party in Congress openly endorse undemocratic means of quelling protests endorse authoritarianism like why are we talking about the far left at all when we have a far right who is so extreme now regardless of uh, me trying to explain that there is no equivalence between the far left and the far right this narrative continues to exist and individuals like john Kasich have gone on television complaining about how joe biden now that he's elected thanks to me uh, should reject the far left. So let's talk about John Kasich's uh, theory here. And uh, I have a lot to say about it. The best thing that's happened to Joe Biden is the fact that the United States Senate is either going to be Republican or very close, and it will allow Joe Biden to do what he does best. It allows him to govern as a moderate. It allows him to do the things that I've always hoped he can do and the far left can push him as hard as they want. And frankly, the Democrats have to make it clear to the far left that they almost cost him this election. Uh, that people in this country are basically center, center right, center left. They're not far left, and they're also not far right. And we got to hope that the far right will act responsibly now that this election is over. It's really interesting that he says all of this with a straight face, right? He's concerned with the base of the Democratic Party and Democratic Party politicians becoming too extreme, whereas he just ran in a Republican primary and his party soundly rejected him in favor of the far right demagogue who is a proto fascist. So you're concerned with extremism in the Democratic Party when extremists in your own party literally ran you out of the party? I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. Aren't you more concerned with the far right? I mean, he cites the far right and, you know, he makes it seem as if the far left and the far right are comparable, but that's a false equivalence. The far left, again, wants to give people health care, whereas the far right wants a white ethno state. So, you know, it's funny that he lambasts the far left in the Democratic Party while saying not much about the far right. But really what this is about is he realizes that his party is too far gone. At his core, he's a Republican and he doesn't want to leave the Republican Party, but he knows that the moderates are gone. They're being pushed out. So the Republican Party, like it or not, is the party of the far right and Donald Trump. Donald Trump may have lost this election, but there are a lot of Trump-esque politicians who will take his place in 2024. Tom Cotton, Matt Gates, who knows? So, you know, for him to say this, what I hear is, look, there's no home for me in the Republican Party. So please have the Democratic Party shift to the right even further to accommodate someone like me who signed one of the most draconian anti-abortion bills, who ruined the environment in Ohio with fracking. I mean, that's what he's saying. Abandon your base, Democrats, so I have a home, so I have a place to go to. I mean, the gall on him. And he literally said the far left almost cost Joe Biden this election. The whole point of John Kasich endorsing Joe Biden and speaking at the Democratic National Convention was to help deliver Ohio to Joe Biden. Guess what happened, John Kasich? You did not deliver Ohio to Joe Biden. It was the far left, as you'd call them, who helped deliver this victory to Joe Biden. Because had it not been the grassroots organizing efforts of individuals like Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar in Michigan and Minnesota, Joe Biden may not have won. Had it not been for individuals like Stacey Abrams, who had a relentless get-out-the-vote campaign for two-plus years in Georgia, 
Joe Biden may not have won. Now, I don't necessarily believe that Stacey Abrams is a progressive. I think that she doesn't really stand for much, but at least she knows that the correct strategy is to get out the vote. But what did you do? You did fuck all to elect Joe Biden. I mean, we are in a polarized time in American politics where you have everyone either, you know, in this camp firmly of the Democratic Party or firmly in the Republican Party's camp. How many people are in the middle? I'll tell you what, not enough to win an election. There were fewer Republicans that voted for Joe Biden this time than there were who voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Donald Trump has a high approval rating within the Republican Party. So all of these never Trump Republicans, all of these so-called moderate Republicans, the reason why Democrats take them seriously is because they have an outsized amount of influence. They're on cable news all the time when in actuality, they don't represent most Americans. Now he says here, people in this country are center right and center left. They're not far left. Now, if you actually look at polls and see how people self-identify, he's correct that people oftentimes identify as more moderate and centrist. However, there's a caveat to that because if you look at specific policies, people side with who he'd call the far left. Raising the minimum wage? Americans want that. Green New Deal? Americans really want that. Legalizing pot? Americans want that. Medicare for all, Americans want that, and that includes a lot of Republicans as well. America is progressive, at least when it comes to the policy. Now, if you ask someone how they identify, they might say, you know, I'm a little bit more moderate or conservative, but the label that they ascribe to themselves doesn't necessarily line up with the policies. But I don't care what label they use. The fact remains that what the far left is pushing is more in line with what Americans want. Not with what John Kasich wants. Americans want Roe v. Wade to remain president in this country, whereas he signed a draconian abortion bill into law to restrict women's reproductive rights. So, I mean, everything he's saying here, nobody should be taking John Kasich seriously, and especially after he failed to deliver Ohio to Joe Biden, he should be dismissed because you're not useful. The anti-Trump Republicans who were working with Biden have failed. The uh, Latino outreach coordinator for Joe Biden was Anna Navarro. And guess what happened? Joe Biden did not perform particularly well with the Latino community. So all of these never Trump Republicans, it wasn't you who got Joe Biden elected. It was one, anti-Trump fervor, and two, the left who actually organized and canvassed to get out the vote. That's what did it, okay? And not just the left. Other people who, you know, organized for Joe Biden did phone banking for him and stuff like that. That's what you can attribute his success to in, in swing states. But this grassroots activism that we saw in key swing states with Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, without that, who knows if Joe Biden would have won the Rust Belt back. So it's the left. It's Bernie Sanders' activism. Bernie Sanders stumping for Joe Biden did more than John Kasich could have ever done. So the fact that he, you know, is trying to come out here and speak with any sort of authority on the Democratic Party's politics when his own party is a complete clusterfuck currently and so extreme that he's not even welcome in it. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's a joke. It's ridiculous. Beta male, not a beta male.